Hello and welcome. At the time this program airs, the two retrospectives exhibit at the Green Hill Center for North Carolina Art will be taken down to make room for a new exhibit. However, before it does, we got to sit down with the two artists, Rebecca and Jack, to talk about their experience in seeing this artwork up, their time at UNCG. Bert Carpenter, who was the head of the art department at the time, his influence and importance on the college, and to their career as artists, as well as his daughter Edie, who is the curator at the Green Hill Center for North Carolina Art. We also covered a variety of topics such as social media, the working artist, time, flow, and deadlines. So please stay tuned for the next half hour as we talk to Rebecca and Jack about their two retrospectives exhibit. Yeah. Uh, I was there from 68 through 72. I didn't get my degree conferred until 77 because I had a five year incomplete, <laughs> but I got it. <laughs> but that's when I got my degree, 77. <laughs> yeah, so people wouldn't know me from 77 at all. And so uh, I, I was, I've just always felt hugely grateful that I was there at that point in time. I think it was just pretty much the, you know, pinnacle of, of what a good a good environment would be in an art school and that was really due to Bert Carpenter who was chair at the time and who you know for example hired faculty who many of them didn't have degrees of any sort they were working artists and they were the best you know and and he also brought in you know just an endless stream of visiting working artists too so there I think a lot of I think the art department still kind of rolls in a lot of the direction it it did then in that uh, there is still the the there's you know they still bring in artists like visiting artists and there and the teachers have studios in the art building and are making work too so so you're not just like taking classes you're you're actually rubbing elbows with people that are like seriously working on stuff. And I think that still goes on because I worked at the Weatherspoon for, for years, which shares a parking lot with the art department. And, and um, going, so I got the chance to go over and visit and make studio visits a lot. And it was better studios than back in the day. <laughs> but I mean, you know, they got well, that was the other thing. The bigger Weatherspoon, facility. When it was back at, L, I mean, when it was back in the old, um, what was the name of that building? When it was back where it McKeever was. McKeever building. McKeever, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Weatherspoon was in McKeever. Uh, it was, you know, you walked through That's there. That's true. You walked yeah. through there every day to, you know, if you had art history or something, you'd be walking through there to get to that to the, that class. So it was a t real teaching, uh, it was a real teaching museum. And the art history professors, their offices and everything were in that wing where the mm -hmm. Weatherspoon was. So, I mean, if you went to the Weatherspoon to look at artwork, those teachers would be there. You could tell when Bert Carpenter was there because he smoked a pipe and you'd go, oh, Bert's probably in there. So we'd go in there and he was great to talk to about art. And mm -hmm. so there was, a, there was, I think, excitement about things. I think, I think it still goes on. I think having the art department and, and the Weatherspoon kind of be in separate facilities, it's, it's put it on a bit of a learning curve to figure out how to keep that relationship going. But it, you know, Weatherspoon's changed a lot. So. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's grown and it needed First to. First of all, you can't smoke in there, yeah. <laughs> back like you did back in the day. And, uh, yeah. But there was also a lot of interaction between Greensboro. I mean, there was a lot of traffic between Greensboro and New York, so in Manhattan, so there was you know, there was this flow of students and faculty back and forth. Uh, they had an apartment there and everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know if they have that now or not. I, I don't know. But anyway, it was a great. It was a great time to be there. I think. And but we both, and we're also we very fortunate at, now to have Bert Carpenter's daughter Evie as our curator. Because yes, she, of, of she this grew exhibition. Up, yeah. You know, she just grew up in that environment and and could totally understand what it what artists need because her father was also an artist and uh, and just just saturated in art really from the get go. And then she got her I mean she got her master's in art history. So she's she's just uh, she's just such an asset to Green Hill. 
she's can't say enough she's about such it. an advocate, and she 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 spent a lot of time in our studios. She was really, she really, I felt like she really got me. I feel totally understood by her. She, I, in fact, I pretty much just let her pick the show and write the catalog and everything. I mean, I just <laughs> was like, she, she did me proud, man. I feel so great. It's, I feel like she's done such an awesome job. Uh, I've worked with a lot of curators, being a museum professional myself, and and so I found her like to be one of the best curators to work with. She's she's so savvy with artists, and a lot of curators love art and have ideas about art, but the way they relate to artists sometimes is it's kind of like applying for a job or something. And there's more of a business kind of uh, interaction, and I think it was a little more personal working with Edie. Um, she seems kind of zeroed in and like drawn yeah. to the artwork. And she's been a curator like at Zabriskie in New York City and in Paris and places. She's, she's actually a professional, she's a real professional curator. She's here in Greensboro because her parents were getting older and she came back here to look out for them and, and then started working at the Green Hill and we're fortunate that she did. <laughs> thing about how, you know, what was it like from each of your perspectives, you know, being a working artist? Because um, I think there's a constant fight, I guess, a constant battle to keep working and keep going, finding teaching gigs or working at galleries, yeah. or whatever it is that you have to do. Tell me about that. Um, my, uh, I've been doing that my whole life, but. Uh, it's not, I think it's gotten more difficult, to tell you the truth, um, since the digital age came around. And some people would say, well, no, that would make it easier, but it's not. It's made it so that, you know, everybody and anybody can jump into that. Well, and galleries that. and marketing have changed, yes. Yeah, that's and true. you're not, you know, you're seeing less and less of the actual painting or, or sculpture or whatever, you, you, just, you know, don't even lay eyes on it. And, and that is just uh, a, a really bad thing because there, there's no way any kind of I image, whether it's digital or print image, can give you the information that actually see, seeing the work in person does. I mean, there's just, it's just two different things. So I think that's contributed to um, a lot of problems in the art world too. No. But people got out and went to galleries more than they, they have, is, I think. You, you know, back in the day, that's what you had to do. If you were going to see anything, you had to go to a gallery or, or you know, had to see it in purpose. You, you couldn't see it in any other You way. couldn't just click past it on Instagram. And now Instagram. it's just, it was, you know, just like this bombardment of, so I, I'm not, you know, the I'm not sure that's of heading. art, to be with art and experience art is, is really still primarily what I'm painting for. I mean, I think that, you know, I, I felt like I looked okay on Instagram when I, I'm actually not been on Instagram lately. Uh, but if, if you know, you, 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 you see it, you click on it, you go past it, you like it. You can like it. But you don't like it more than a split second, you know? But if you come into a gallery and you look at paintings, you have to spend some time. And it keeps giving you stuff. And that stuff is is due to the fact that it's materials that have the human hand in it. And, uh, well, you can't even get accurate color on, I mean, you know, digitally, you, 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 who knows what the color is. Right, everything kind of changes. Yeah, depending on what platform you're on, depending on what... How your, the lighting was. Right. It sure yeah. gets it out there to everybody, though. I mean, it's in terms of, like, being very uh, uh, widespread, everybody can see everything now. So it's not like there's, you know, but, but, but then our value system, it gets challenged by that because, you know. Just whip uh, through them, just whip through them, you know. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. What, it, what are people actually absorbing? Yeah. But I don't, I don't do it for, I don't do it for the public, so, you know. <laughs> what do you do it for? I just do it for myself, yeah. And I, I think if you don't, it's not going to be successful. I don't care who, I don't care what what your topic is or what you know what form of, of artwork you do. If you don't do it for yourself first, it's 
it's going to fall short because do it for somebody else you're playing to what they want not what you're trying to find what you're after and have you always had this um mindset when you're mm, when you're yeah. doing your work yeah yeah i think it's pretty critical others might argue with me about that but what do you think jack i do i i am trying to communicate with someone when i'm painting so i'm not totally just doing it for myself but you yourself, you're communicating what you, is coming out of you, right? Yeah, I'm really trying to communicate. I want to, I want to communicate on a, on another level. I feel like, you know, that the thing about painting, for me, is that it, 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 it the medium itself becomes a way to express myself on different levels. I mean, of expression, like you know. Uh, you know, how does something feel? How does something, you, you, you know, a painting looks a certain way, but in that look, there's feeling. There could even be like a taste or smell or or a sound could become part of the quotient because it's alluded to and it and it's understood and people look at it and they people remember stuff about paintings often that maybe weren't there before but if they they put into it and I'd, I'd love that if people did that to me if they looked at my work and they saw something that that i didn't put there that's just awesome too you know because i feel like i want to i want to create a situation that people can interpret i'm not trying to just spell it all out i really want a story to be told but the story can be a different experience for a viewer than it is for me I, and I I'm cool with that I'm actually fascinated with that I think that the metaphorical power of painting is just has been what's blown my mind this whole time I and and the fact that this extra sensory thing can happen and also how the 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 whole th and and I think this is something we share too is as we depict a moment a moment isn't like a freeze frame. It, it is a moment that you can dwell within. There may be a sequence of moments, maybe a suspension of time rather than a freezing of time. And I think that's something we all yearn for when we experience things in our lives. It, you know, it, everything we experience is rapidly, it becomes the past. You can't preserve the moment you can dwell in the moment in a painting and I think that is what makes paintings so like seductive to people people want to see paintings for that reason because they can have that feeling they can and I think that's something that we share because you know whether it's a, a realistic thing that we're depicting or whether it's fiction it's about that the, the sensation of experience and uh, and then there's there's other sub contexts going on that are like you know meaning what does it mean and it could mean a lot of things and it could mean different things to different people and that's that's awesome I feel like that's that gives painting a special place in human expression it keeps me going. I'm just constantly, it doesn't get old. I'm always discovering stuff. I'm always. Um, so you'd say that in that sense, it's for yourself. <laughs> and in that sense, it's for myself. You're right. It is, it is very self-indulgent. And, I, and uh, I've, I've found one, you know, I've, in fact, it's kind of subversive in a way because <laughs> I feel like I get my best work done when I should be doing something else. Like if there's something else I ought to be doing, I really paint much better because I can just get away from that. You know, it's like, I, I don't know. It's escaping. It can, yeah, I kind of, yeah, it's very. I have a hard time. I, I can't, I can't do, I mean, I have to have, uh, to paint, I have to have nothing else nagging at me. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, I'm sorry. But I'm never like that. that. There's always yeah. something nagging at me. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, <laughs> like I can't switch from, because when I paint, it's long haul stuff. You yeah. Know? I mean, people would, you know, pe some people would finish a painting before I even get my palette loaded up. I mean, it's not good. 
so slow. <laughs> How long does it take you to do a painting? Well, it just depends on what it is. Generally. People yeah. ask me that all the time. Months, sometimes months. I've got one going now. It's just a portrait. I've got three solid months in it. I mean, no, no. You know, like 40 hours yeah. a week, whatever. And it's not, any, it's not, it's not done. I never paint anything in one time. At one time, yeah. I, uh. I work on them for a long time and I repaint them over and over again. So, so that just depends. You know, yeah. depends on how many you have going at the same time. You mm -hmm. But, but there'll be there'll be times that probably happen to you too where I'll work on something and just kind of for a long time and then just sort of lose interest in it. And I get more done and when I have two at me things going and on. Say, you, you know, you yeah. need to, you just get, you've got too much time in that. Just go finish it. And that can take But it's nice time. to have another project going. <laughs> I feel like if I have more than one painting going at a time, it helps me get them done quicker because I'm not bogged just, down in one. I'm not bogged down yeah, in one. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, it's and sometimes do. I'll do a couple of the same paintings, but I'm doing them all different. And then I pick the best one and that's what I'll show to people. But it's like I give myself a lot of room for error. That's why working on a deadline is is a difficult thing. I mean, increase. I used to do that a lot, and now I just you know refuse to <laughs> refuse to do it, <laughs> which you know has its downsides too. But you know, you'd have a show. I'd have a show coming up, and and I'm a slow painter, and I may have eight things going. Yeah. With a deadline, <laughs> and sort of move from one to the other to try to keep them all up at the same level, mm. and, and and hope. That you know, by the, the by the time that deadline hits, you're you know you're you're finished with them. Otherwise, you can just nail lean into one and and never get beyond it. Yeah, it's you don't want to lose anything with all the other. Like you're right, rushing, yeah, yeah. You're rushing five, but you got two that were really. Well, you can you can work. just tunnel in and and lose your perspective, and and all of a sudden you know you've got one done and seven that are. In pretty critical so condition. It can, be, it can be quite stressful. <laughs> yeah, you know? it is, it is. A lot of people say, oh, well, I get relaxation from painting. Uh, I rarely get a lot of relaxation yeah. from it. I can get a lot of pleasure from it, but often it's, it's, it's very, it, it can be very, very stressful because it's, that's that's why well, we, that's why we call it work. It's the deadline that's why we call to it do work. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and the deadline does that to it. And also, I get to a place where, okay, if I don't stop painting this, I'm going to kill it, mm -hmm. or I've overpainted it. I had it. Now it's gone. Damn, I've got to do it again. You you and learn. <laughs> you you <laughs> learn when you've got to say, so, well, maybe it's not done, but I can't do it anymore. I work on it anymore. And that, for me, it's the same as ever. Like, and you're spending a lot of money. If Art I put something, are if I'm trying to correct something and I do it three <laughs> times and and it's the same thing. I keep redoing it. I say, well, it's, you know, that's, yeah. you're not going to move beyond that. Or the paint, surf do something to break paint out surface that. starts to build up to the point where you can't really work it. Then you just have to stop. But other than that, just keep going. You know, you can keep yeah. going, which I don't know. But then every now and then one pops out and it's done and it's like, wow, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that makes it worth <laughs> like, it. Wow, I did that <laughs> in eight hours. I don't know what <laughs> that happened. Fiction. Yeah. It's it's the same. It's different for everybody, and it just really depends on the kind of painting you're doing too. You know, what I do is just so layered, layer after layer after layer, and so labor intensive. I can't uh, if I don't work for a long stretch on um, in one thing, and I'm gonna I'm gonna forget where I was in some ways. Yeah. I like to have a minimum of about three hours when mm -hmm. I paint, because if I if I just can work like an hour a day on something. I, it, I find it really difficult to, to tap into where I am. Yeah. It's like I almost have to like dance around it a little bit before I can, you know, go in. And it, and that takes some time. And so if I've been already working in the studio for about an hour, that's when I paint the best. So it's really good to have other like rituals that you do that aren't exactly painting, but you're there with the painting like cleaning stuff. Cleaning is a big part of painting. <laughs> I think people don't realize, mm. well I teach, I teach art classes here at the city. Uh, in the, I keep real extensive sketchbooks. Mm. I uh, have a bookshelf of nothing but sketchbooks. And uh, I draw and paint with watercolors often, every day, everything. Like I have a collection of 
drawings of waiting rooms I've done in the past couple of years. You know, stuff like that. I mean, I'm just constantly drawing stuff and writing too. So I have these, they're really journals. And uh, I fill one, I get like a sketchbook and I'll fill that sucker up in about two months. But it's not, I'm not doing it thinking that I'm doing things that I'm going to show people. I'm just, just, I'm just exploring the world and, and recording stuff and that could be things from life or ideas that I make up. And there's a healthy amount of all of that in there. And, and because I do that, I have a whole backlog of stuff I can refer to, too. So I, that, that's a lot of my working method is, yeah, I do draw pretty much all the time. But I, can't, I have a journal with me almost all the time. I have, mine's in the car right now. But, but um, yeah, I just can... I recommend to everybody to do that if they want to become an artist. If, if just get yourself a little book and draw all the time, and eventually you it get you get better, and your your ideas will work themselves out. And just by drawing regularly, you'll become a better drawer. Um, I don't do that at all. <laughs> and she's different than that too. You, I don't do you, that. You, you spend a lot of time on one image. Well, I think I, I think a lot yeah. about what I do more than you know. Mm -hmm. uh, that works better for me. And you know, I'll think for a very, eye. very long time before I do something because it's. I know when I do do it, it's going to take a lot of time, and and I don't want to just jump into. Doesn't work for me to jump into things that without a lot. But of you about see it. everything. She has the most astute eye. <laughs> she, you know, she I look a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you don't miss anything. I mean, I mean, you could probably like if you had to reconstruct the room you're in in your mind. You could do it because I think you do see everything. I couldn't do it because I have a terrible memory. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I, I see you seeing everything. Like, okay. she, like she can come in this gallery and she can see if the pictures are all level or not just by scanning around. See, I don't see that right away. Everything kind of dances in my eyes. And, uh, but she'll see it. And I've, I've noticed that about her. I think everybody has like a different attention to detail. Like, yes. All three of us are going to walk in a room and we're going to see just totally different things. Yeah. It's kind of, I think it's so, everything is so subjective too. We're all going to, because we see different things because we are, it is a subjective experience. And, uh, and so, you know, what we see is kind of what we're, what we're looking for to see, what we're looking to see. And so mm -hmm. the only, the only thing I think that painting can do to kind of get around that, you know, without, you know, hitting somebody over the head with a sledgehammer because a lot of, you know, a lot of um, conceptual art and a lot of uh, political art, too, for that matter, is just, you know, really trying to, you know, jolt somebody into to seeing things in a different, in a certain perspective, whereas uh, I don't do that. And, you know, you, want, you're ne you, you know, you have stories to tell and you want people to, to understand them, but I don't think you're able to, say, you know, go into try to force that on somebody. So then who, what the viewer sees in anyone's work is not necessarily at all what that artist intended. It's, it's what they, their own filters are, are allowing them to see. And the only thing you can hope, to, if you wanna, if you, if there is an intention to, to open up someone's viewpoint a little wider, um, you, you know, you, I think the only thing you can do is present them with that option and hope that that, that that image has enough other stuff that they're interested in to pull, to pull them in yeah. to see something else or to see, in a, see it, a, a bigger picture, so to speak. Yeah. You want to create an unalienating experience, mm. you know. I mean, there, there, are, pain, there are painters who... Who, who, whose work is so personal you know, that if your headspace is in the vicinity of theirs, it's just not gonna, it's not gonna resonate with you one iota. And then sometimes you have to say, well, I don't really want to get in that headspace. You know, <laughs> the painting could still, uh, could still function. I think is a successful painting if it had a lot of other elements of design and, and composition and 
you know, just the, the technique of it going on, and not the subject matter. You can, you then it can be a really, off. I mean, there are a lot of painters whose subject matter I don't like, but I say, yeah, they're really good painters mm -hmm. because of these other, other right. things, so. Um, seeing all the work together, um, I guess final statement here, seeing all the work together, what has that been like for both of you, either one? Well, some of these, as I said earlier, the, the, most of this work, m there are a couple that were shipped in, but most of them, most of this work is from, from North Carolina because that was the easiest to get. But, and, you know, so some of it I've seen on and off over the, over the years. The bulk of more, more work in my exhibition is on loan than... So it's like seeing old friends, you know, <laughs> kind of to see some of these paintings that I haven't seen in a long time, just sort of like old friends. And, and you know, you can measure your reaction to them and say, well, that was more successful than I recall or less successful, whatever. But it's sort of odd to, to know that these, uh, I'm not somebody who, it, you know, feels like I have to keep all my work. I, you know, I'm, you know, spend so much time with it. Once it's done, well, you know, it can go away. But, yeah. but, when, but then you see it come back, and you think, you think it, it's got its own life, and it's living it some, somewhere else. And you know, yeah. that's a little strange. You know? And seeing them all together too, yeah. you see, yeah. sort of how you, how they all like look happy together. They all, and then you start thinking about the ones that you haven't, you know, and probably like never will see you. again. And they're, you know, they're living some life, hopefully, in a good place. But it's a little, you know, kind of creepy in a way. <laughs> I feel like seeing all of my work together like this taught me something about myself. I feel like I know myself better after seeing all of it together because it... Um, it brought all this stuff home, and I, all of it was very current when I did it, and then like it lived in other people's homes or mm. whatever. But now when it's all together, I see how it all like supports its, each other. They all kind of work together, and, and they're all like from me, and I'm seeing how I think or how I developed my own like way of thinking as a person over all these years. and. Uh, yeah, it was kind of like it was very revealing to me about myself. And in a very, uh, it's kind of an abstract thing I'm saying, but I mean, it, I was confronted with my life when I saw all this stuff together, and I was like, "Oh my God, yeah, <laughs> okay, now I see." It, it makes it, they all even make more sense seeing them all together than they do individually to me. Yeah, that's that's been seeing all the work together from all those years and seeing it all just kind of be together and work together. I think we both see that. We both see our lives in there, you know, because we've been doing it most of our lives, both of us. I don't think we're going to quit anytime soon. <laughs>